Earth, before humankind, before any historic records, was essentially a mysteriously painted masterpiece of living, breathing wonder. The only remnants of our predecessors lie in the fossils they left behind. Their bones echo the stories of how they lived and died. They dominated this planet, their habitats quite different from the land we know today. However, the ground in which we walk today is still the same as theirs was 65 million years ago. See, before the footsteps of the first human beings, dinosaurs ruled this planet. Two hundred thirty million years ago, in an era known as the Mesozoic, the world belonged to the dinosaurs. They were the lords of the earth for over 165 million years and lived in almost every part of the planet. They ate, fought for survival, cared for their young, and lived in community. Each had their own specialty. Their strengths contributed to the larger world. Yet it's only been for about 200 years that we've even known they existed at all. The first dinosaur fossils were discovered in 1819. Sir Richard Owen, an English paleontologist, coined the term dinosauria, a Greek word meaning terrible lizards. Dinosaurs became a leading subject in paleontology the study of the history of life on Earth through fossils. Like detectives searching for clues to a mystery, paleontologists attempt to unravel the secrets of these terrible lizards from the bones they've left behind. However, the science realm is not the only thing that dinosaurs have taken by storm. Go on an outing. Turn on the television, browse the internet. Dinosaurs have spearheaded a pop culture invasion and have achieved fame in almost every facet of entertainment. I have a sign and it says there are 10 types of people in the world. Those who love dinosaurs and nine types of stupid people. Now I probably really shouldn't say that and I don't really mean it, but yeah, it just, I can't understand how people would not like dinosaurs. I, I do a lot of the tours here in the museum, and so I have uh, a lot of little kids come in, and they actually know the names of more dinosaurs than I do. Something about them just captures the, the imagination of, of people. From toy shelves to clothing racks, dinosaurs evoke their sense of wonder on the masses. The movies have especially capitalized on this dino mania with films like The Lost World, One Million Years B.C., the land before time, and the mega success of the Jurassic Park franchise. I mean, you know, there for a long time, that was the most popular movie ever. And of course, you saw the sequels and just here more recently, the Jurassic World and how popular it was. People find dinosaurs interesting. Yet this one dinosaur seems to always dominate the spotlight and has ever since its discovery in the early 1900s the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The first Tyrannosaurus remains were discovered around 1902 by fossil hunter Barnum Brown. While prospecting at the Hell Creek Formation in Montana, Brown unearthed a partial skeleton of a dinosaur he called Dynamosaurus Imperiosus. Pieces of Tyrannosaurus Rex were being found long before anybody knew what it was. 
And back in the 1870s, the 1880s, 90s through there, people were finding things, calling it all sorts of things, but as it turns out, it was really Tyrannosaurus rex. There were several different people. Probably the most famous is the very famous dinosaur paleontologist Cope, and he actually found a Tyrannosaurus rex vertebra. He thought it was a Ceratopsian dinosaur, the horned dinosaurs, and he gave it a name and all this, but it turns out later it was T-Rex. So the official, okay, what we call the official discovery was around 1900 by Barnum Brown. Henry Fairfield Osborne, the president of the American Museum of Natural History in New York, and Brown's boss, felt the creature needed a more frightening name, befitting what they perceived at the time to be the largest monster ever to kill for a living. Osborne named the dinosaur Tyrannosaurus rex, meaning Tyrant Lizard King. T-Rex became an overnight sensation with paleontologists who were quick to begin study on the beast, building theories of what it ate, where it lived, and how it reigned as king of the dinosaur world. Walt Disney and McDonald's helped sponsor an exhibit that went around to different museums. And they did a complete T-Rex. I mean, the entire skeleton of a T-Rex. It came to the Mississippi Museum of Natural Science, and that was one of the nearest places. Well, the paleontologist there is a dear friend of mine. We've published together, we've presented together, and he said, Gary, we have a VIP night. We'd like for you to come. The little protective railings are down, and you got to go and walk underneath this 40-something foot long T-Rex. You got to sit there and, and actually could just almost touch the claws on its feet, which are, you know, eight inches, and stand there underneath its hips, it put chill bumps on me because it was like being there with the real T-Rex. The largest, most complete Tyrannosaurus skeleton was discovered by amateur paleontologist Sue Hendrickson in 1990. Her finding was named Sue after her, standing 13 feet tall and reaching over 40 feet long. A lengthy legal battle was fought over the ownership of Sioux that ended in it being auctioned off to the Field Museum in Chicago, Illinois for over $8 million in 1997. John Horner, one summer around year 2000, found five T-Rexes. Now, obviously, they couldn't excavate them. That takes a long time. But they came back in subsequent summers and excavated them. But the next summer, excavating those five, they found three more. So he found eight T-Rexes. And he says that some of them are better preserved and more complete than Sue. better understand this imposing beast, let's take a look at the time in which it lived. Our Earth is estimated to be about 4.5 billion years old. All the land masses were joined into one large supercontinent called Pangaea. During the time of the dinosaurs, Pangaea began to break up and by the end of the Cretaceous, our familiar seven continents that we recognize today began to emerge. The reign of the dinosaurs began about 230 million years ago during the Mesozoic era. Their rule on Earth is divided into three periods, the Triassic, the Jurassic, and the Cretaceous. It is at this point in prehistory that we find T-Rex. Tyrannosaurus lived in what is now Western North America. An inland sea split the continent, trapping the animal in the Western region, an island called Laramidia. Its fossils are scattered throughout former Laramidia, from Alberta, Canada, to the state of Texas. The climate was humid and semi-tropical. 
dinosaurs like hadrosaurs and ceratopsians like triceratops roamed the land as well. Here's an animal 45 feet long. Here's an animal with a skull that was close to five feet. Here's an animal with teeth that could be anywhere from a couple of inches to close to six inches. You know, with a mouth that could in one bite, 500 pounds. Okay, consider another animal, and this animal could take a bite of 500 pounds out of it, based on the size of its jaws and other specifications. So that, that's exciting. I mean, that is scary, but it's exciting. It's estimated that an average adult could weigh five to seven tons. Some scientists believe it could run up to 18 miles per hour. However, some have claimed that because of its size and bulk, it may have been better suited to scavenging. But non-fatal bite marks on bones of prey animals such as hadrosaurs suggest active, if not always successful, predation. His brain contained a large area for smell processing. The predator also had forward-facing eyes, giving it increased depth perception. Here it was, this huge, massive dinosaur and little arms that are only two feet long with two little small claws that aren't much bigger than the claws of an African lion on this big, huge dinosaur, two little small claws. But yet modern studies have shown us that those wimpy looking little arms could probably pick up about 500 pounds. Although it was the pit bull of predatory dinosaurs, its life was not easy. A typical Tyrannosaur is now believed to live about 30 years, growing fast and perishing young. But despite all its strengths, they couldn't prevent it from facing its inevitable extinction. Now, I think that children, and maybe adults too, one of the things about dinosaurs that they really, really like, they're all extinct. Okay, when you're a little kid, you can learn all about T-Rex, how big, how ferocious, how big his teeth were, but when you go to bed at night, you don't have to worry about one under your bed, okay? The T-Rex isn't gonna be there, he's extinct. So see, you can be awed by dinosaurs, but not be concerned about them. There's not one hiding in the dark closet. No, they're all extinct. You're, you're safe with dinosaurs. T-Rex fossils are found in rock formations from the end of the Mesozoic era, about 67 to 65 million years ago. The species itself was around for only two to three million years. A short time in comparison to the history of the Earth, but still longer than the existence of modern man. Though it lived at the very end of the rule of the dinosaurs, it left behind a very powerful impression in prehistory. Today, the only record we have of its existence are in these fossils that we find. It's the only key we have to the life that it once lived. Its story is written on these bones that it left behind, and it's our job as paleontologists to let the world know that it was here. We are the only voice for these beings in the world of today. It's the passion for discovering our Earth's past with the quest for bringing forth the knowledge of such an amazing creature to the attention of the world today. Zoology, study of animals. There's ichthyology, study of fishes. Ornithology, the study of birds. Mammology, the study of mammals. Herpetology, the study of amphibians and reptiles. And 
those ologies have just about disappeared from biology curriculum. Fewer and fewer are being offered throughout not only Louisiana, the South, the whole country. Uh, I think it was Linnaeus who said, if you lose the name of a thing, you've lost the knowledge of that thing. And so, you know, I, uh, we have to know what things are before we can actually study them in detail and, and describe them uh, so that other people will know what they are. And by doing so, we learn a little about ourselves and our role in this ever-changing planet.